Well, we've all been cooped up and now we're itching to get outside, but the thing is we've got to remember our sunscreen. That's why I want to bring in Dr. Tanya Bowles. She's with Intermountain Healthcare and she's a surgical oncologist. Hi, Dr. Bowles. How are you? Hello, Jenny. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Good. Well, in this topic, I have a lot of questions, probably way more questions than we'll get to in three minutes, but I do want to start with what's the difference between sunscreen and sunblock? Because I thought it was just the way people, you know, called it. Right, so sunscreen is more of a chemical-based lotion that gets that you put on the skin and gets absorbed into the skin and protects you from the powerful, dangerous rays from the sun. Sunblock okay. does the same thing. It protects you from those dangerous rays, but it sits more as a screen on the skin. So even though it's called sunblock, it also is a screen, but it doesn't get absorbed into the skin. So it lasts longer than sunscreen. So these would be what are also called mineral-based sun blocks like zinc oxide okay. and titanium dioxide. So when I'm thinking of sunblock, I'm thinking of the person with the white face that hasn't rubbed it all in. Is that what sunblock is? Right. You could see the block in it, right? But the newer formulations of sunblock really blend into the skin well. Even though they're not getting absorbed into your system, they blend in better so they're not as white. Okay, good to know. Now, my other big question is SPF. Where, what's the lowest we should potentially go? And does it really make a difference if we're getting that 110 SPF? SPF 30 is the lowest you should go. The okay. higher SPFs are not dangerous. You can buy those. If you have one that you like that's SPF 100, that's fine. It just doesn't give you twice or three times the amount of coverage that the number might mm. imply. Okay, good to know. I'm always wondering that. So you still need to reapply no matter what the SPF is. Do it frequently, especially if you're getting in and out of the water. Uh, now, as far as Utah goes, we've got a lot of melanoma here, more than any other state. Why is that? We do, and melanoma is not the most common skin cancer, but it's the most dangerous. It's the kind that can spread to lymph nodes or to your organs. So why do we have a high rate of skin cancers, including melanoma? It's a combination of factors. One is that, yes, we do have a lot of Utahns who have fair skin, but even Utahns with skin of color have a higher risk of skin cancer here. So there's okay. other variables that influence that. One is our high elevation. We have a very yeah. high elevation overall compared to other states. And we also spend a lot of time outdoors in the winter and the summer and the spring. So that combination of factors leads to an increased risk of skin cancer in all Utahns. Good to know. And if you're going outside, you can get clothing that has UPF in it. Explain that. Yes, you can. And these are more widely available. They're more um, uh, cost effective to buy. They used to be really expensive, but now mm -hmm. at a lot of stores you can find them. So this is a way to reduce how much sunscreen you need because keeping sunscreen on your kids all summer or even on yourself is hard. But if you yeah. have a shirt that has a UPF that protects you, you don't need to put sunscreen in those areas. So we encourage people to look into that. Look into using a shirt, a long sleeve shirt when you're out gardening. Put your kids in a long sleeve, long sleeve shirt when they're swimming. That covers a lot of their skin without having to put sunscreen on every two hours. Lots of great info. Well, Dr. Bowles, thank you so much. And if more people uh, want even more info, they can go to intermountainhealthcare.org. And I appreciate it. I might be uh, emailing you with some more questions too one day. Thank you. Thank you.